so it's uh, not the typical place that you might find me. Uh, this isn't, well, I guess this, it, it is my bakery. Uh, although in a very unexpected way, uh, you can see that we have a banner up that uh, is from our farmer's markets. Uh, so I was visiting my dad in Poland a couple weeks ago and uh, had a chance even to play some tennis up there. It was a really nice time. Uh, and striving home after one of these tennis sessions uh, to a message from an old friend, a fellow baker from the valley, um, Hope. Uh, actually, she had been in my garage back in 2018 when we were still hand mixing all of our sourdoughs. Uh, we were hand laminating all of our croissants. Uh, she had come over to see our garage and get some ideas because across the city, some 30 miles away, she was also building a garage bakery uh, and started the same time as us. Well. Uh, I've always had a lot of respect for her ever since. Uh, she really uh, cares about her customers and her community. And uh, we sort of cheered each other on from across the valley for the last six years. And uh, Hope reaches out to me asking if we might not be interested in taking over her bakery. And I'll, I'll show you what's going on back here. So the news was extremely unexpected. Uh, the time frame was almost impossibly fast, uh, but what she was looking for was equally impossible to ignore. Here we are having been building our brand and building the capacity to make bread and sell it through the week. Uh, as you know, we started as a garage bakery uh, meaning we built a business based on Saturdays. Uh, Saturdays almost exclusively uh, for a while. And the whole reason we built number two with the mill and all of that and recovered the garage equipment was we're on this mission to have more even scheduling through the week. Our bakery is still being funded by like four hours a week on a Saturday. And if it rains or you know, if it's really hot outside, people don't come to the markets. And we now have a huge team to support. Uh, a lot more, you know, of a real set of business uh, expenses. So having the ability to have more than one place to sell during the week, especially given we have the trucks and we've got the, you know, big equipment. You've seen the size of our ovens in Mesa. It's all designed for Saturday. Well. Now we're trying to get it to be active all week so that we have a stable uh, production schedule. And as a result, like it, it improves everything for everyone. Uh, a baker has a more predictable life as opposed to coming into work on Tuesday and having a completely different set of things to do than on Thursday. Meaning we can build our team stronger. We can make stronger bakers more quickly because they get to repeat similar workflows more than once a week. Well, all of a sudden my friend reaches out and wants me to take the reins on something that she's been building for seven years. So this brand is the west side of Phoenix Metro equivalent to proof. And it took a sharp turn about two years ago when the original founder, my friend, uh, got sick and had to take a step back. Uh, apparently somebody ran it in between. It didn't go so well. They ended their, their working agreement and she realized that she is not going to be able to come back and do this again. Uh, meaning dive all the way back in because after having had time to think about it and put her health first, she's chosen her health and her family first. And so here we are. We have been operating here for a couple days. Customers are coming through the door. 
we're baking most of the product overnight at our Shea facility and bringing it over. But as you can see, we have equipment here. So I'll give you a brief tour. This is the ovens. Uh, we've got a pull-in, which is the same brand that we have in our downtown Mesa bakery, but notice the wheels and the four decks. It looks a lot like our other oven, the ABS. In fact, I think it's more related to our ABS than the pull-in in terms of how you use it. I've done some test bakes on it already, uh, and it works really nice. One thing though, if you use these, don't assume that these control panels are identical, even though they have the exact same functions. What I learned kind of the, the hard way uh, was that in my Mesa pull-in oven, I get a report of what the actual temperature is in there and my setting. In this pull-in oven, I get a report of the top and the bottom temperature, like my ABS. Well, I assumed pull-in would have the same exact controls. So the other day I was baking and I set this up at 465, which is my typical uh, baking temperature for country sourdough. And this number was reporting higher and I assumed that somehow the deck itself had just gotten hotter because that would have matched the controls in my other pull-in oven. Then I pull out the bread, and I might actually even have some. Yeah, I pull out the bread and the bottoms are really dark. Uh, what the heck? I don't understand. Uh, and then I go back to this temperature setting and realize that if you double click on this, it switches to the bottom, which has its own temperature control. So I called Hope and I asked her about it, and sure enough, uh, this one works more like our ABS oven does with top and bottom temperature control, even though it's the same exact control panel that I have in Mesa. Uh, it also has a damper that is controlled by this button. So you hit this button, and that's what opens up the damper and allows the oven to vent. You have to wait for this thing for 30 seconds to turn, and then I also noticed that if you set a timer, it automatically kicks off the damper function, which closes your damper and traps steam. So I had to figure all this out kind of on the fly. And you would think that two pull-in ovens work the same. But I don't know. I guess they serve a global market, and they have a lot of different options, even their one menu. So. If you work on multiple pull-in ovens, just beware and get to know the oven that you're working on because they might have slightly, slightly different functions. Anyway, bakes beautifully. Next time we do a shoot here, I'll bake some bread in this oven uh, for you guys to see. Uh, I've got this uh, convection oven, which apparently I'm going to be making our pastries in. It has room for one, two, three, four, five times two, about 10 trays. So it's got a little less capacity than my Shea rack oven. It also does not spin around. So I'm going to be very reliant on the fan in there to circulate air. But I predict that once we start baking pastries, we're gonna have to rotate them uh, once in a while. That's after they set, because if you pull them early, they'll just collapse. And not only will you have to rotate them, but we'll probably have to shift them around in the oven based on uh, how it operates. Not a big deal. I've used a convection oven um, like this in the early, early days. Um, and it's sufficient. Um, so as you can see, from the looks of it, you know, you could use the word turnkey I'd maybe call this 80% turnkey for a satellite facility. So let me show you, show you around. There's a Ram mixer, uh, 40 quart, really beautiful brand. Uh, relatively small for, for our needs. At this point, it would be good for a test batch uh, of dough. Um, and then there's 
a pretty cool fork mixer. Uh, this mixer has a different action than, uh, than our mixers do. And I haven't actually had any time to mess with it. I'm not even sure if it will turn on for me without the guard being on, nor am I sure how to put the guard on when it's so close to the table here. I wasn't able to bring a rack of bread in here. I had to move all this stuff back a few inches. So now, now the mixer is sort of blockaded. It, it's a cool mixer in the sense that it's got a different action and it's a little gentler with dough. It can fit about 60, 60 quarts, it looks like. That's the, hence the 60 in its name. Uh, the issue with that is it's still under a bag of flour. So it's also a small mixer. With one location, we were losing money actively. When we opened Mesa, we went from being a profitable business in the garage to opening Mesa and having seven straight quarters of a loss. Granted, you know, we had to finance a lot of the facility and, you know, that factors into it. And that loss also does factor the fact that, you know, uh, I was paying myself for that time. But we were not operating in a way that we could operate indefinitely. By the time we opened up Last year in October, we added more farmer's markets. We were doing eight on Saturday, eight locations on Saturday in addition to Mesa. And we pulled that one location from the red into the green uh, for the first time in seven quarters. Eight farmer's markets though, and 30 products. Of course, we opened up number two and that really helps you know, the bottom line. This one will immediately enhance our bottom line because it's in alignment with our overall business strategy. But now take the other end. You know, let's say you're on the other end of this business deal. You don't have another facility, this is it. So whatever you're going to make, you're gonna make in this beautiful fork mixer or you're gonna make it in that higher end planetary mixer. It's not a lot of mixing potential. The bakery here had grown beyond just sourdough. They were making pies and cheesecakes. They were making uh, quiches. They were making cookies. They were making a lot of quick breads. So imagine making our entire production line. And you know, if you're mixing, this is your space. If you're shaping, we have these benches here. Um, we have a couple pieces of equipment in here right now. So the cooling rack, which can move around, um, we have one speed rack. Now that I've been operating here a couple days, I have had more than one speed rack back here and it, it becomes an issue. Uh, like, where does it go? Um, see, I've got, back here we've got a um, refrigeration uh, and we brought the bread that we baked overnight on those. We brought pastry on these. And now actually we can't get into the fridge. Um, so you've got a mix, you've got a shape. The sourdough bread's got to hang around for 24 hours. You're going to start mixing and shaping the next day while that bread's still alive in your facility because that's when you're baking it. Uh, and you've got to support yourself just on the sales in this one location. Granted, it's a really amazing community. Um, and I guess I can only imagine how difficult it must have been to bake start to finish back here. Uh, how crammed it must have been. Um, and I don't actually have to imagine because I can just go back in time to our garage. You know, this is pre-YouTube channel. This is 2017, 2018, all the way until early 2019 when we essentially had this much space. And all the equipment, you know, we still had to have the same kinds of equipment. It was easier to uh, hand mix back then. Um, so that's one less piece of equipment. Um, you know, in your small space. It was almost easier to hand laminate the croissants because again, a sheeter needs 14 feet of wall space. So 
this is inconceivable for me to operate of everything start to finish, especially with a more complex product line than, than we have. It can be done. But what will end up happening is only a few people working around the clock. Many chaotic moments because when you don't have the ability to organize your workflows in a structured way, kind of things spontaneously break down. Interferences happen that you weren't expecting and it's a daily occurrence, it's daily pivoting. And to be honest, I think that that part of building this is required unless you have a lot of money to start a bakery. But if you have a lot of money to start a bakery, you better be really passionate about starting a bakery because if you already have a lot of money, then, you know, I don't know, there's probably easier ways to make money. Um, I certainly am not doing all of this just because it's the easiest way of making money. Uh, let's be honest. So, assuming more people are like us where they truly start from a um, a humble position financially and they're building as they go, you're going to encounter this part of it and it can't be permanent. And so as a result, you know, my friend on the other side of this transaction, I think the way she's looking at it is she understands that diving back in requires something more in order to make this whole. We've done that work. We've actually been doing that work since 2018 when we started building the first edition in the garage to separate the ovens from uh, the mixers. At that point, we already had more space than there is in this bakery in our home garage. The next year, we added another doubling of that facility and we grew the foundation of our business there. Uh, by the time we moved, that foundation already existed. So moving into Mesa, though we were at a loss at first, all we really needed to do was then tap into the potential of the new bakery, which is what we're doing. And here we are. Um, within the next few times that you see this place, it's going to transform because the back end is actually perfect as a satellite. Let me show you kind of what I envision. This whole area of fridges, although we need access to that rear uh, water heater closet, it's probably just gonna become a walk-in cooler. It, the whole thing. Uh, because why would I take away what actually amounts to at least double the space? In fact, I'm using more energy right now powering one, two, three, four, five fridges than if we just transform this into a walk-in cooler. You need the ability to invest in that and we won't be able to do it right away, but it's going to happen. It just makes perfect sense. We're then going to bring in the products that we intend to bake here every day. So again, Mesa is going to be sh mixing, shaping. Uh, one of our refrigerated trucks will accept that product. It will deliver product to Shea, deliver product here in the morning that one batch will be baked off in three places, fresh for the customers. So this oven will be critical to what we do around here. Uh, where I'm standing now is going to be a two-door proofer retarder. So you've seen in my other facilities that we proof pastries in full-on rooms uh, overnight. Well, this facility is gonna run a little bit smaller. We won't need as many team members and we won't have multiple shifts here, meaning we will open in the morning, we will close in the afternoon. Well, who's going to proof the croissants for the next day? Somebody's got to literally physically put them in a proofer about eight or nine hours before we bake them. That's a problem. So I'm investing in a proofer retarder, which can be programmed to kick on at a particular time of day meaning the pastries will be waiting cold in this uh, unit and with a flip of a time uh, stamp, the computer will change from cold to hot and all of a sudden they'll start their proofing cycle, go overnight and be ready to bake in the morning. 
we will use that oven for now to bake our pastries. I think long term, I might want to replace it for a rack oven, unless somehow I fall in love between now and then. Now, all of the rest of our locations, rather the other two, Shea and Mesa, have an element of openness when you bake, meaning customers walking in can see the oven. And, you know, usually it's like, at Shea, it's through the cooling racks. So it's not completely exposed, but it's still very visible. It's clear what, what we're doing around here, baking bread. I want the customers here to have the same experience. So I think this winter, I want to move this oven, which actually is on wheels, here, meaning basically flip this setup. It's not as easy as just moving the oven on wheels. That's the easy part. I've got to reroute the ventilation, and more importantly, we have to reroute the electrical and the water to be on this wall. It's not a huge undertaking. Uh, probably could be done in one or two sessions. Uh, but nonetheless, like it, there's a little bit to do here. Uh, from there, this wall separating the front and back can come down. Uh, which is going to be wonderful. Uh, uh, we might just cut it in half. Uh, that way the health department can't, you know, come back and cause us more issues. Something odd. So I was trying to re-optimize with the stuff that was in here the other day. And this reach-in cooler is at standard height. This doorway is below standard doorway height of seven feet. 84 inches. So you can't fit a cooler through this door without tilting it. Uh, so as a result, our front has a back of house cooler. But you can see it's, it's very beautiful, the bakery. Our products look really nice in it. Uh, and we were so fortunate that um, three of the former team members here uh, came back on, on, on board. There's only three people here working a couple weeks ago. So actually a couple of the former employees that left in that interim management uh, period where my friend was um, bedridden, um, they're coming back. Uh, they're going to be working with me next week. So basically we have the original Hopes crew here um, and it's kind of an interesting double brand right now because the whole side of town is familiar with hopes. And so they're coming into a, almost a bittersweet experience. They're actually the rest of the week this week, Hope has been here with us selling. Uh, and so a lot of her longtime customers are embracing her, uh, talking with her for 15 minutes, uh, sharing the sharing this moment, which um, is kind of like a community loss when a, when a really well-respected baker you know, goes through some change. Uh, and then they're coming up to the case and we're sampling all of our items uh, and introducing uh, our menu. Uh, and then people are having this, this experience of, oh, proof isn't so bad. Uh, and most people are are actually seemingly leaving happy. You can see it in the social media. We were losing followers when we first posted the announcement, a lot of them. Uh, but this week, ever since we opened, we've been gaining fo followers again on the, on the other account. So you can see like people are accepting the change and Hope has been helping with the change as well, which I mean, you couldn't ask for more, honestly. Uh, this particular community loves their sliced bread. Uh, so what we've been doing around here is slicing to order. If you come to this location, you can basically pick any bread, even something like our cranberry walnut, and we'll just slice it to order for you. It's a common practice around the world. Uh, we just hadn't been doing it, uh, partially because of the way we chose to set up our locations. It does add like a need for an extra person um, helping, but it's a nice experience too. I'm always torn because I want people buying whole bread. It changes the eating experience when you buy whole bread. 
Uh, instead of storing it in plastic where there's no air around it, you're storing, uh, you're storing it, you know, maybe just covered on the counter. And the bread changes every day. Uh, it's more prone to, I mean, it's basically guaranteed to mold without preservatives in the plastic bag. That's for one. Uh, and, and two, you know, you really have to toast it. Uh, you don't get the experience of um, maybe the loaf going dry if you don't finish it and sort of thinking about what you might do with, with that bread um, because you could make panzanella salad, you could make croutons, you could, you could still use bread very long as like something to dip into your soup. Uh, there's a beautiful book called Bread is Gold by Massimo Bottura that is dedicated to uses for stale bread. But in a bag, it's not going to stale. Uh, it will mold and then you'll throw it away. Uh, so I prefer selling whole bread. Uh, and we're sort of meeting this community where it's currently at. Uh, but it doesn't mean that I'm not pushing the whole bread on the other side of the table. So up here, we also have to think about how we're going to be cohesive. This pastry case is way smaller than the cases we have. Uh, and it hasn't worked out poorly for us, but we are thinking about ways that we could optimize the space for how we like to do things. The coffee counter here is actually very well set up for drink service, and this brand was outdoing us on the drinks, you know, hands down. So uh, that's basically our intro into this space. We obviously are gonna have a very busy, busy, busy year uh, with a lot of projects ahead. Uh, maybe a little bit more than we were expecting, but definitely a really good change for proof. We're happy to be here.